Well lads, what's the crack and welcome back to another new video on KTFG and another Premier League predictions here. So uh, we're now on the match week 10, already getting into the double digit match weeks here. But match week 10 here, a few more interesting games as always. So before we do jump into today's Premier League predictions without wasting too much time, uh, make sure you do subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you are a new viewer, 95% of you who watch, my new uh, who watch my videos are not subscribed. So once again, if you are a new viewer, make sure you do subscribe. Make sure you like the video as well, it really does help and support the channel. And make sure you click the bell so you're notified when I do upload a new video. So, enjoy today's Premier League predictions from Match Week 10. Starting off then on Saturday, and there's no half 12 kickoff on Saturday, so we're starting off in the 3 o'clock kickoffs. The first one being Bournemouth v Leicester. Now, Leicester got back to winning ways with a 4 0 win over Nottingham Forest. That was a massive win there for Leicester. Bournemouth on the other side. Held Brantford out for a nil-nil draw in that one, so pretty boring that one there. So interesting match, definitely. I tell you what, I think Bournemouth will keep this one uh, tight at the back, definitely. They limit Leicester a lot, but I tell you what, uh, the Foxes just have to win this one, don't they? They have to win it, and I think they will. I'm gonna say they'll run away with all three points. Only winning this game one nil. I'm gonna say in this one, the only goal coming from James Madison now. Madison has been in incredible form this season. He's been unreal this season. And well, I can just see him scoring another goal in this one. Once again, strengthening his chances of getting on that plane to Qatar with England. So, I can see it being a brilliant goal as well, with Bournemouth being so defensively sound in this one. You know, Bournemouth are going to play good in this one. But overall, I think Madison, a screamer for James Madison, is going to be the deficit in this one. And Leicester are going to get all three points down in the south coast. So, Leicester then, I'm going to say they beat Bournemouth 1-0. Now we move on to Chelsea, up against the Wolves in this one here. Chelsea got a 2-1 win away at Crystal Palace. Conor Gallagher winning it in the 90th minute against his former club from last season. That was a tough one to take in for Crystal Palace fans, definitely. But, I mean, a crucial three points there for Chelsea, definitely. Wolves on the other side, um, I forget how they did do, but Bruno Lage was actually sacked uh, by them. Uh, was he sacked? I don't know if he was sacked. I mean, I didn't really see anything there i'll put it in the video uh, i'm not too sure actually pretty sure he was sacked though but i mean wolves at the moment are in a bit of bother they're in the relegation zone at the moment and when i saw this match the one thing that came into my mind was 2-0 win for chelsea and well that's what i'm going to go with in this one i'm going to say the blues can get another good win in this one i'm going to say they'll maybe lead 1-0 at the break i can see maybe the german kai havertz getting the goal in this one here and well then that'll be the only goal of the first half with Chelsea leading at the break. Second off then, I'm going to say Chelsea will play good football once again. Wolves already have nothing really to do in this one. They can't do anything really with Chelsea dominating. And well, with about 20 minutes left, I can see the Croat, the Croatian midfielder, Mateo Kovacic, getting the ball and he'll score one from about 20, 25 yards. It's going to be another screamer here for uh, at Stamford Bridge for Chelsea. And well, that'll just see it all three points. For Graham Potter's men. So Chelsea here. I'm going to say they beat Wolves 2-0 at Stamford Bridge. Next game then. We've got Manchester City v Southampton. Now Southampton. They, I believe they did battle uh, 1-0 late. To lose 2-1 at home to Everton. So I mean. That really was a poor performance there for Southampton. They let that one go. But I mean. City on the other side. A 6-3 win in the Manchester derby. With both Haaland and Phil Foden scoring hat-tricks in that one. I mean. City at the moment are just unreal, they're unbelievable, I mean, they're just destroying everyone left, right and centre, they're playing FC Copenhagen as of uh, tonight, as of recording, uh, I'll have that result up in the video, I'm not too sure of it right now, but I mean, Man City here, I can just see them destroying Southampton in this one, it's going to be another one of them demolition jobs that the Eddie had, isn't it, and I'm going to say, City win this game, a whopping 5-0 in this one, it's going to be ugly for Southampton, let's just be honest here, it's going to be really ugly for them. And, well, I don't know why I think this, but I genuinely think Haaland will score not one goal, not two goals, but four goals in this match. I don't know why. I think Haaland is going to get four goals in this match here. I think the other goal then will be scored by Jack Grealish. He's a player who's looking very good at the moment for City. And, well, it'll be a 5-0 win here for uh, Man City against Southampton at the Etihad Stadium. I believe that would maybe make it 20 goals for Haaland after 10 matches. I don't know why. It's not, he's obviously not going to score four goals in this match, but I don't know why. I'm throwing it out there. I think it might actually happen. So, yeah, I'm going to say Man City then. Beat Southampton 5-0 with Haaland getting four goals 
to his name and a fourth match ball already this season in the Premier League. Now we go on then to Newcastle United versus Brentford and another interesting match here. Newcastle did pretty much uh, destroy Fulham after that early red card as uh, like 4-0 or 4-1, something like that. Really good win there for Newcastle to get them back on track. Brentford drew 0-0 against Bournemouth of course, um, but it's going to be an interesting match here once again. But uh, who's going to get out on top? I'm going to say that the home atmosphere at Newcastle is just about going to get them to win in this one. And I can see them getting a 2-1 victory in this one at home to Brentford. Um, I'm going to say they might be leading 2-0. I'm going to say Newcastle will be dominant in the first half and they'll be leading 2-0. Bruno Guimaraes now is back from injury, which Newcastle fans will uh, have a sigh of relief about that one. I'm going to say in his game, I do believe his, this is the game he returns in. I think he's going to score the opener in this one with about 10 minutes gone. And well, Newcastle will be leading then 1-0. Then I'm going to say, then of the 30 minutes gone in the match, 35 minutes or so, Joe Willock then, the young Englishman, Joe Willock, he will get another goal to his tally, and he'll make a 2-0 then before the break, and Newcastle will have a good lead here in this match against Brentford. I'm going to say then, second half, New really, Newcastle won't do too much, they'll just be passing the ball about. I can see maybe with, maybe with about 10 or 15 minutes left to go, uh, Brentford can pull one back then through Brian and Bemo. I think he's a quality player and he will get one back then for the base. But overall, ultimately, it will not be enough. And well, Newcastle will get a crucial three points here to help them for this season. So Newcastle then, I can see them beating Brentford 2-1. And now we go on to Brighton versus Tottenham. And well, Tottenham at the moment are in a bit of bother, aren't they? I mean, a 3-1 defeat in the North London derby. That's always not too great for Tottenham fans. Following that up then with a 0-0 draw away in Germany against Eintracht Frankfurt in the Champions League. At the moment, Tottenham aren't looking too great, but Brighton on the other side. First match with Roberto De Zerbi was a 3-3 draw away at Liverpool. That's a pretty good going there for the Seagulls, if you ask me. De Zerbi already looks like uh, the next Graham Potter, doesn't he? He looks brilliant so far with Brighton. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to say Tottenham will slip up here once again, and Brighton can get another point out of this one. I'm going to say it'll be 1-1, one, one, one point the pace in this one, one goal apiece for both teams in this one as well. And well, it's going to be a draw here. I can see Tottenham leading at the break, 1-0 at the break at the Amex Stadium. Harry Kane scoring right before half time, right in the stroke of half time, possibly from the spot or from a corner, something like that. And well, I can see Harry Kane then opens, opening the scoring in this one against Brighton. But then in the second half, I'm going to say Tottenham will try and play for the victory. They'll miss plenty of chances. And then with about 20 minutes left in the match, the Argentinian midfielder, Alexi McAllister, he will get the equaliser in this one, and he will equalise for Brighton. McAllister has looked brilliant this season, and well, I'm going to say he will score another goal in this game to get an equaliser then for Brighton, and another crucial point for them against one of the big teams. So Brighton won, Tottenham won. That's what I've gone with then for the half five kickoff on Saturday. Now we're on to the Sunday games, and a few interesting games here, definitely. Uh, first one being uh, Crystal Palace versus Leeds. Interesting match here again, definitely. Um, I th I'm going to say here, uh, it's going to be interesting. Both these sides at the moment currently struggling, of course. Leeds uh, drew 0-0 with Aston Villa. By the way, I got that prediction right there, so a good prediction got right there. And well, Palace let go of a draw and losing in the 90th minute against Chelsea. Really, that wasn't ideal for them. But anyway, um, it's going to be an interesting match at Selhurst Park. But you know what? I'm going to say Leeds will get a 2-1 win in this one away at Crystal Palace. It's going to be a tight one, definitely, and a very entertaining match. But overall, I'm going to say Jesse Marsh's side will get the victory over Patrick Vieira's men. I'm going to say it'll be 1-1 at the break. It's going to be an interesting match, definitely. Uh, Jack Harrison, I'm going to say, will open the score after about 20 minutes or so um, for Leeds and well. They will have they will uh, strike first blood here in this match. Jack Harrison opening the scoring. Before then, with about 15 minutes later or so, I'm going to say Wilfred Zaha then will get the equaliser in this match. And Crystal Palace will be going into half time with something to hang on to definitely. And it will be a draw then at half time. Second half then, not much will happen. Plenty of chances for both sides. And well, um, both sides cannot really convert. But before then, in injury time, I'm going to say it'll go to injury time, still 1-1. One, one, and the young Italian, Wilfred Gnonto, who just joined from FC Zurich, I'm going to say in about the 93rd minute, he will manage a scuff in a goal. 
and well he'll score his first goal in the Premier League with Leeds and it'll end up being a last minute winner away at Crystal Palace. A crucial three points here. I'm going to say it'll be for Leeds and well I'm going to say it'll be the young Wilfred Ganonto to get the winner here. So Leeds winning 2-1 away at Crystal Palace. That's what they've gone with here for this match. Now we go on to the big match of the um, of the weekend and it is Arsenal versus Liverpool. Interesting match once again. I mean Liverpool still not looking too great in um still not looking too great in uh, the Premier League. But I mean a comfy two win at home to Rangers. I'm sure the Liverpool fans will definitely take that. Arsenal did get, of course get a good win in the in the North London derby, but they have a Thursday night uh, game against Bodo Glimt at home. Like so, I mean whether they'll rest a lot of players for this match or not, I'm not too sure. But you know what? Seeing how Arsenal at the moment are doing incredible. And Liverpool are still struggling a wee bit. I'm going to say that Arsenal can get a win in this one. I'm going to say at the Emirates Stadium, Arsenal will beat Liverpool 2-1 in this match. Yes, I'm going to say the Gunners can get another crucial three points. And Liverpool once again failing to expect to, uh, uh, to exceed in the Premier League here. So it's going to be interesting, definitely. I'm going to say it'll be 1-1 at the break. I can see Liverpool opening the scoring after about five minutes. I'm going to say a good header by Darwin Nunes of all players. I'm going to say Nunes will be back on the score sheet in this one. And he will open the scoring early on then for Liverpool. So, and then I'm going to say right before half time. Another bad defensive error by you know who. Trent Alexander-Arnold will lead to Gabriel Martinelli breaking through the Liverpool defence. And he will equalise. The Brazilian will equalise then. And make a 1-1 before the break. So good, the Gunners then getting an equaliser right before half time. And then the second half, then Arsenal will just continue to dominate. I mean, Liverpool will just be getting split open defensively. The midfield will not be playing good. And then with about 15 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes left in the game, I'm going to say on the edge of the box, Martin Odegaard will get the ball and he will strike it in top corner. No chance Alisson is saving it. And well, a beautiful goal by the Norwegian attacking midfielder will get the win here for Arsenal. All three points in dramatic fashion here for Arsenal. Jurgen Klopp's side will not be looking good once again, especially in the second half. And Arsenal will by far be the better side and by, by far the better team. And by far, and by far, of course, they will deserve all three points in this match. So I'm going to say then Arsenal will get all three points away at home, as should I say, against Liverpool, beating the Scousers 2-1. And now we go on then to Everton versus Manchester United. Another interesting match here. United need to bounce back after that humiliation away at Man City. We're playing against Ammonia Nicosia in the Europa League, of course. So um, we could. Uh, it's a good chance to raise players for this match, definitely. I tell you what, Everton, of course, doing all right at the moment. So we can't really be expecting an easy game here. It's going to be a tough enough match here. But I just cannot say that Everton can win this match. It's going to be a United win. It's going to be a United win away at Goodison Park in this one. I'm going to say United will just about get a one 0 victory away from home in this one. I'm going to say it'll come with about the goal will come with about thirty minutes gone in the match. Marcus Rashford then will just about break through the defence and he will score the only goal of the match early on in this one. And well, that'll be it really. It'll be a pretty boring match in my opinion. Not, not much will be going on. United will pretty much be the better side. Everton will have their moments, but overall, I'm going to say Rashford's goal in the 30th minute will be the, will seal the deal here, and he will get United a crucial three points away at Merseyside. So United here, I'm going to say they beat Everton 1-0 away from home. And now finally, then we go on to the Monday night game, and it's Nottingham Forest beat Aston Villa, and another version of El Sakako here. Now, Steven Gerrard, of course, still under pressure, but Steve Cooper is on massive pre under massive pressure. I mean, 20 players signed in the summer, and they're currently rock bottom. That really is poor stuff there by Steve Cooper's men. And, well, that, who's going to win this match here at the city ground up in Nottingham? I tell you what, both, both these managers' jobs in the line, they're both really not going to want to lose this match. And, well, I'm going to say it'll finish in a 1-1 draw on this one. Both managers will take a draw on this one, definitely. And it will finish 1-1 here on Monday night. I'm going to say it'll be goalless at the break. But early on in the second half, Danny Ings will open the score. And for Aston Villa, getting a crucial goal for his uh, season here. Getting another goal to his tally. Opening the lead here for Aston Villa. But then about, about 10 minutes later, not too much longer later, I'm going to say the Swiss midfielder, 
uh, Ramo Freuler. He will get the equaliser in this one. And the Swiss midfielder then will equalise. And he will get a crucial point here for Nottingham Forest. So, I mean, really, the first half will be pretty poor. Second half will start to live up to expectations a wee bit here. So, I mean, it's going to be an interesting match, definitely. Both sides will be pushing for a winner. But overall, but they'll both have to settle with a point. So, Forest 1, Aston Villa 1. That's what I've gone with then on the Monday night fixture. And that will end today's Premier League predictions, everybody. I hope you did enjoy it. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on the notifications. Thank you all for the support on the channel once again. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all once again in KTFG very, very soon.